everyone and welcome to Training Tuesday for Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary and tonight we are going to look at some of our royals at the ranch doing target training practice. We're going to start with Mew Are and you see that he is living in a converted tub that I've put a glass front on and that is working really well for him and he does have halogen and UVB in this tub. I'm using a blue round plastic target for him and I've used that since his first feeding. So as soon as he arrived and he got his first meal with us, I started pairing this target with food. And then after a few sessions, I started showing him just the target until he would orient towards it and move in its direction like you see here. Now keep in mind that none of these sessions are going to be as dramatic or as complicated as you may be used to seeing with some of my Brettles pythons or my king snakes, even my rough scale python. Some of my other snakes can do some very complex behaviors. My inland carpet pythons do some very complex behaviors. Royal pythons are not the quickest to catch on to the target training. They are very quick to catch on to the fact that the target means that they are going to eat, but they aren't necessarily that quick at learning to follow it and move towards it and to do complex tasks to earn food reinforcement in relation to the target. Now that was a very dark snake. That was uh, Gunji. He's a Suma, which is a super mahogany and he was difficult to see. I realized that this is Fennec and she is another Suma or super mahogany royal python and she is way at the bottom of her converted tub and I'm asking her, you can see her little face coming up over the lip. I'm asking her to come off the bottom of the tub and over the lip to the door and just come over the threshold a little bit with her face. And then I'm going to reinforce her for that. And so with these royals, oftentimes I am reinforcing what for other snake species would be baby steps. I'm able to stretch some other snake species much further between approximations than I can with the royals. This is Ezra, and you see on the left, to the left of the target, Ezra's old terrarium that he had when he was a little baby. And I moved that entire terrarium into his four by two by two black box cages enclosure. And for, I wanna say almost a year, Ezra really didn't leave his terrarium too often. He would leave it to drink, and occasionally he'd go on that net. But it's only been recently that he has pretty much now, I feel confident in saying, abandoned his terrarium and he's pretty much living in the enclosure at large. Now Ezra's target is a little bit different. His is a round green plastic target and I have it affixed to the end of an extendable fly swatter. So I took the fly swatter section off and I left the extendable handle and attached it to the target. This is another snake in a four by two by two black box cages enclosure. This is Sarek. When Sarek was in a small enclosure, he wanted out all the time, constantly. He wanted out constantly. He wanted to spend all his time in an exercise tent. And so I moved him at a very young age into this four by two by two black box cages enclosure. And he seems very content and calm in this. He has so much space in this enclosure compared to his size that he isn't seeking to come out very often. He seems pretty content in here. There's plenty for him to do in here. And he's not constantly at the door trying to get out the way he was in his very small terrarium. This is the snake that lives right below Sarek. Her name is Feather. She's in another four by two by two enclosure from Black Box Cages. She is actually um, pretty outgoing at target training for a royal. She absolutely orients to the target right away and she moves towards it, what I would describe as quickly for this species. And all of these snakes in these training sessions are doing a fairly good job at striking and hitting the target. They all went through a phase, well, when they were very young, they just caught on to the target training really, really quickly and they seemed to be doing very well at it. 
And then they started hitting around eight to 12 months old, and they started to be reluctant to approach the target, reluctant to follow the target, and they started missing their strikes. Uh, This is Ahsoka, by the way, and her favorite spot to sit is up there on that shelf. And I went over a paper in a previous Rules at the Ranch video about strike performance in Python Regis and how researchers actually discovered that they're pretty efficient in their strike performance as youngsters, as hatchlings. But as they become juveniles and they reach about 18 months old, they actually decline in their strike performance. So their strike performance declines. I certainly saw that in these snakes when they were around that age with the target training. But now that they're getting around two to three years old, they're not missing their strikes as much. And they seem to be building up their target training skills again. Now, why they go through this phase where their strike performance declines, why they go through this phase in training where they seemed very, very uh, quick to follow the target and move to the target, and where they were hitting their strikes when they were going for the prey accurately every time. And then in this juvenile phase of around eight to 18 months old, they just become poor at it. Their strike performance declines, and that has been documented in a research study. And I can also say around that time that their target training doesn't decline. They still understand that the target means food, but they're not moving towards it confidently. They're not moving towards it very much at all. As you can see here with me, Aminette, she's moving towards it very, very slowly. And this just seems to be a phase that some of them go through at various ages, but her strike performance has gotten better and she's not missing her prey. So my older adult royals, they seem to strike just fine. They seem to move towards the target pretty quickly for the species. So I think it's a phase they go through during their juvenile or adolescent period for whatever reason. Now, this is Phoenix. She gets very over exuberant sometimes with the target training. So she has not yet gone through any phase where her confidence and where her motivation has declined to move towards the target. And she's pretty good at usually striking her prey. This is Kenobi. He had been out climbing around this net and he had been hanging down in an ambush position and I went and thawed something out for him and got his target and of course by that time I came back and he had gone into a tunnel. This is probably a great time to mention that you may deal with this with your python regis. You may see that they're out and they're active or they're out hunting, they're in an ambush position, maybe they're at their door. You go to get their exercise tent or you go to thaw out food and get their target and then you come back and they're gone. They've gone back into hiding and they're not coming out again. So you might have a very small window or a much smaller window with this species to interact and engage with them than with a species, say like a Brettles python that wakes up at sunset and they're pretty much active and awake and alert all night long until morning. So Kenobi is coming out of his hide. He's coming towards the target, but he's not doing it super confidently. And I'm not getting him to come very far. This is just something, if you have royal pythons, that I suspect you're going to encounter at some stage in their training and some stage in their life. Now, why they do this, I don't know. Now, in contrast, this is my Morelia carinata, my rough scale python. His name is Sangral, and he oriented towards my hand as I was opening the door. He oriented towards me as I was getting the equipment ready and checking the camera, and then he immediately oriented towards his target, and then he immediately took the prey. So this is a typical target training session for most of my snakes. What you are seeing with all the royals It's just something that's typical of that particular snake species, and I would say it is not typical of most of the pythons that I work with. This, what you just saw with Sangral, is more typical.